Hi, I'm Lace and I'm the author of Three Dishes One Soup, which is this book right here and it's all about Singaporean home cooked dishes and recipes. So basically this is the online version of a talk that was supposed to happen back in March but it got cancelled due to the whole COVID thing and a bunch of us back then, if you remember, I posted it online. We were all supposed to gather together at the National Design Centre and share about women's creativity and freedom. Well, Frank the designer and organiser, he's decided to put everything online so we, we just filmed our speech from home and we sent it to him and he, he's the one piecing everything together. So thank you Frank. Yep. And my sharing today will naturally be more food slash cookbook centric because that's what I have some experience in. And before I begin my sharing, I'm going to be giving you guys a little bit more background about myself, where I came from and how I got into the whole cooking, baking thingy. So many years back, I felt drawn into the kitchen when I was about 19. I just started my first year in SMU and I was pulled into it, not by the cooking side. That came a little later on, but I was drawn towards the baking side and anything related to the oven. So I used to whip up macarons, chiffon cakes, cookies, cupcakes all the time during my free time. Yep, and I just entered SMU then, it was my first year. So basically, every lecture there, you have your laptops flipped open and the teacher is speaking there and the teacher doesn't know what you're doing behind the screen. So I would spend the entire three hour lecture just looking at recipes. So back then, taste spotting was all the rage, it was the side. And I would be there stocking all the cookies, cakes, cupcakes, brownies, blondies, cinnamon rolls and bookmarking all the recipes that I wanted to make. And it was also during that period of time that I purchased my first cookbook. And the very first two books that left a very indelible mark in my whole cooking baking journey, they were Baking by Dor Baking from My Home to Yours by Dory Greenspan and the Tartine Bakery Cookbook. And I just remember being so enthralled by the books, I would flip and like flip through the pages and get totally absorbed into their world. And I felt really happy just reading it. <laughs> it was a beautiful world of buttercream, frosting, scones, cakes, bread. So fast forward a little bit more, during year 2 or year 3, I actually started my own online cupcake business. And also back then, Facebook was the thing and I sold it um, purely online through Facebook and a Gmail account. It was not bad, it was, it was pretty overwhelming the orders honestly. I was baking like thousands of cupcakes a month and it was not bad pocket money for a student. I started the business because I didn't want to take pocket money from my dad anymore and it was lucrative for a student, but I just didn't have any free time and I perpetually smelled like oven and grease and yeah, <laughs> had basically had no time for any other thing. And the cupcakes got pretty popular and they even appeared on several publications like Her World and Wine and Dine. And the orders got so overwhelming to the point where I dropped my second major in school. Nothing major, I probably wasn't interested in it as well, so... <laughs> But yeah, anyway, eventually I stopped the whole cupcake thingy because I felt burnt out and it wasn't what I wanted to do. Um, yeah, I felt like my passion for baking was just draining and seeping away. So I entered the corporate world after graduation and completely stopped my cupcake business. And the first few years in the corporate world, I was still baking and cooking on the side and I started cooking. Yeah, and I would go to the CBD with all the baked goods and give it to my friends and, and clients. And it was during this period that I felt my passion for food deepen and intensify further because I was able to not have to do the same thing every day and repeat the same the same procedure every day, which was honestly driving me a little bit mad back then. <laughs> Super stressful. And I had the luxury of just traveling and enjoying food. I even went to San Francisco for a work incentive trip and I finally tried Tatin Bakery. I was so happy because I was staring at the pages of the scones, the the cakes, the pies and their sourdough breads for so long and I and I finally managed to try it and it was basically the book that inspired me to bake. <laughs> so yeah, a couple years later I had this idea for a cookbook. It was during Chinese New Year and I think it was during 2016 or 15, somewhere there. But basically it was during Chinese New Year. And my grandmother, she, my mom's side, she's the one who cooks for our reunion dinner every year and she's one lady. She's like one tiny lady. <laughs> she cooks everything and none of us know how to cook whatever she cooks because no one else in my family cooks basically except me and her. And I don't know how to 
cook Chinese dishes back then. I was only dabbling in Western dishes or baked goods. You can tell it's quite Western, like baked goods, all the cupcakes and all. And uh, during ch that Chinese New Year, it was at her old place, which is a tiny three-room flat, and all of us were gathered there. And her mahjong table, a very simple, humble, wooden mahjong table, was laden with food, tons of food she prepared, steamboat feast, her famous nohyong, her kong ba pao, and she would also buy some roast meats from the market. And it was basically a huge feast. And then I looked around at everyone, and I realized that once the recipes are gone with her, it might no one else can replicate what she does, no one else can do what she does, and still no one else can do what she does. I, I don't think I make it as well as she does. <laughs> so I decided to document everything down. And, uh, yep, so I had the idea for a book and to document all her recipes down properly. I went to learn from her and I went to measure everything. I went to observe how she made it because she, she doesn't measure like many grandmothers and and the older generation she doesn't measure anything she doesn't follow a recipe it's just they're so used to it it's it's almost second nature to them they're attuned to everything that goes on in the kitchen it's just common sense to them they won't think to explain it to us yep. and every time i ask her how she makes something she'll say it's so simple it's it's not a big deal <laughs> so i went into a house and i Batched in and brought my weighing scale and weighed everything and documented everything down <laughs> and compiled it into this book. So when I first embarked on my cookbooking journey, it basically all started with a notebook. I enjoy writing things down, so I was just writing the idea down for the note for the cookbook in the notebook and just brainstorming what the segments would be called, how many different segments there would be, and for the first cookbook honestly it was basically everything that i wrote was what you see in here now <laughs> almost the segments the segments the name the names of the segments and everything i think it's because it mostly came from my memory and my, and my subconscious it's just you know the food that i grew up eating and i'm very familiar with with everything and all the stories so this notebook was would be where i would document all the recipes as well especially in the day i would be testing recipes before and after work or going to my grandma's house during the weekend to learn how to cook something and i would document down everything like trial number one attempt number two what went wrong what went right and how i can improve the recipe whether this recipe would make it to the book and i would also do some research so basically during the night time i'll be at my laptop typing away and piecing everything together and typing and writing the content in this <laughs> and it was my peaceful time I really enjoyed it it was quiet and I could just express myself here so I feel like everything that we do even if it's it doesn't have to be something big like writing a song writing an album doing a fancy painting or artwork it can be just something small in our everyday lives like how we dress how we take care of someone we love how we cook up a simple breakfast it's basically an expression and, a, and an extension of ourselves and who we are our individualities, our likes, our dislikes, and being able to express who you are and speak your truth, isn't that freedom? It's, it's a pretty liberating thing because you, especially in, in, for the book in my case, I was just able to kind of find my own voice and cooking style and then channel it all out from, from within. And I felt like it was a super liberating experience so like I said, it doesn't have to be one big grand thing. It can be just in our everyday lives as well. And wherever you find joy or peace or happiness, yeah, just follow it because the world is complicated enough <laughs> and stressful enough. And funny enough, um, back when I was baking and, and traveling and then enjoying all these food things, or learning about it and experimenting with the recipes in my free time, I had no idea where it would lead or that it would lead to this. I just knew that I enjoyed cooking, I enjoyed baking, and I really enjoyed um, getting lost in, in a cookbook, especially a cookbook. So that was what I followed and pursued because it brought me so much joy. Yeah. So whatever you find, little pockets of happiness or joy in, just kind of follow it and see where it leads. You don't really have to know all the pieces of where it will lead, but you know, because as long as it brings you some form of joy, happiness, or it makes you feel something inside, something good, 
not something bad. Just pursue it step by step and you can see where it leads. And if it doesn't lead anywhere, just treat it as an experience learned and deviate. <laughs> and yeah, and if you've made it this far into my sharing, thank you for sticking around and for not switching me off and getting bored. But if you do, I kind of understand as well. Hmm. So especially during this period of time where we're all on a lockdown and at home, I hope that everyone's keeping well and following their bliss, like I said, and just carve out something, some time in your day to do something for yourself, even if it's just 5 or 10 minutes, because I understand that many of us have tons of responsibilities and things to take care of. But whatever it is, just make sure to find that little pocket of time to indulge in something you really enjoy and, and take care of yourself. See you!